Salutations from space and aloha from Earth, friends. This is Gemini Brett of More Than Astrology with part three of who knows how many uh, previews for the astrology of 2019. We're looking at charts here of 2019 and 2020, the midnight New Year's date, um, cast for San Francisco, California, but using a zero Aries wheel, a natural house wheel. And the part one, I really spoke about the oddity of beginning New Year's by the clock rather than astronomically. Um, so you can refer to that. We also got out to Pluto in part one and then part two is Neptune, Uranus, Chiron. It's by sign. And now we'll do the same for Saturn, Jupiter, and maybe Mars. So let's look at Saturn, who's at home, right? In the sign of Capricorn. And in 2019, moving from 11 and a half to 21 and a half degrees Capricorn, about 10 degrees, right? You can see the retrograde period there. Every year, Saturn retrogrades for about five months and backs it up by about seven degrees. I say that every year, and it's not always true because orbits are not circles, but ellipses. And this is a really interesting thing. Saturn reached aphelion, which means the furthest from the sun on March 17th, 2018, last year. Interestingly, the same day that Saturn stationed. Um, and so furthest from the sun means darkest, coldest, slowest. These are all things perhaps that Saturn most like. And Saturn has only two Kazemis. And when I'm using that word, I mean sun, Saturn conjunctions and the sign of cancer where perihelion is, where Saturn is closest to sun and therefore moving fastest, and three in the sign of Capricorn. So I mean, maybe this is one of the reasons that Saturn said to make home in the sign of Capricorn, where Saturn came um, on December 19th, 2017, and the sun joined Saturn there on December solstice last year. That's pretty significant. And this year of 2019, right on January 1st, so if you're a Gregorian New Year's kind of cat, this should be a very significant astrological indicator for the year ahead. I think I've said enough now about why I feel working with a solstice or an equinox chart would be much more of a, a, a global honoring. But So let's not get down that rabbit hole now. <laughs> let's just say that this year, Saturn is in Capricorn for the entirety of the year. This is an amazing thing. Um, at home. And this is the case as well for Jupiter, where we will soon go. But first, let's honor the synodic cycle of Saturn. So the Sun-Saturn synod, the meeting of Sun and Saturn, again, January 1st, 2019, 11 and a half degrees Capricorn. And what you'll see as we move down the list, the Sun square Saturn, Sun opposite Saturn, etc., cetera, is um, the sign that holds the Sun at the time of the aspect, because it is the faster moving planet in this case the sun, which is really the speed of the earth, um, that we speak first in aspect theory, right? So sun applies to and perfects the square with Saturn from the sign of Aries on April 10th. And at the end of the month, Saturn stations retrograde when the sun is near the trine. Sun opposite Saturn in the middle of Saturn's retrograde, July 9th, Cancer, Capricorn, Shortly, just one week after a total solar eclipse and therefore right in the midst of this solar lunar eclipse season. It's going to be a fascinating <laughs> Sun-Saturn opposition. And we'll speak more about Moon and Saturn and the occultations of this year as we move forward. All right. This, for me, is what we are called or invited to um, re-engage with by Capricorn Saturn. Get aligned. You know, Saturn in so many ways is, is root chakra and grounding. And it's odd, you know, because Saturn is the furthest out light as far as the visible planets go, right? I spoke in the last episode about how Uranus sometimes is visible and how I feel this is a really important um, indicator to help us know exactly what Uranus is and does. But for sure, Saturn is the one that we can very easily see and was known in ancient times. And so it's a very fascinating thing to me that Saturn has these energetic implications of 
grounding. It was said to be a god of agriculture and the land and this because Saturn is seen so far out. I mean, in the Chaldean order, which really is the fastest to the slowest planets, you know, and this idea here is Earth and these spheres of influence. We first find Moon and then Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn is way out there, you know, Saturn, the last planet in that cosmology before stars really and somehow saturn is all about the earth so it's a it's i may be spending more time here than necessary but i think it's really a beautiful image of the ancient wisdom that saw i believe the zodiac itself and also through this maybe metaphor of planetary shells or actually living experience of planetary speeds there's this feeling where the energetic it's like it gets all the way out and that brings it back to the center it's very much like that torus right which the further expands the closer you are to the middle all right and that doesn't really sound like i'm speaking saturn talk does it i'm like very much on neptune today so to bring it into saturn it's about getting alignments and i'll just say where i where i am today i've got a couple interviews coming up and um, this is take three of this particular part of this 2019 astrology journey. I'm not really feeling uh, articulate and um, present right now. So actually, you know, I was just going to say I was, when, we, when I stopped this, I would do some grounding, but let's do that now. I mean, this is what Saturn really wants. So feet firmly on the ground. You better even just sit on the ground, but I will just, from this place, even in a house that's somewhat elevated from the earth, I'm going to send my cord, my spine, all the way down into the heart of Gaia. And I spoke about Uranus and Taurus and the importance of us really grounding our own electrical system and our nervous system this year. And I'm being reminded, and a lot of this presentation was actually built for me to, to hear myself, tell myself to practice what I preach. And this is one of those things that looks like this. And it's a pretty simple thing. Now, Really, I'll work with calling to the directions daily that didn't happen yet. And so I'm in some ways tempted to hit stop and do that and start again. But I don't think that's right. You know, I, I think we are in many ways preparing for what could be an energetic outburst of heavenly happening. <laughs> and the greatest service we can give to this world is to come to it in a grounded way where we know who we are and we know where we are and how we are aligned. So I'm actually happy to share my mishaps here because it's nice for me to be reminded, um, again, to practice what I preach, I guess. Capricorn earth you know deep earth the roots of the world tree i love this um puer tea that i often drink though it can really lift up these are oftentimes leaves from very ancient trees that have been reaching their branches into the heavens for so long in some ways that's that aquarian thing and traditionally, Aquarius, also Saturn. Yeah, more modern times, we think of Aquarius in association with Uranus, but traditionally, that is the branches side of Saturn as tree, where Capricorn certainly is the roots and the trunk that supports that growth. And we have to root deeply if we want to reach for the heavens, yeah? <sighs> Better. <laughs> right. So what we're looking at is an image of Karnak in Egypt. It's an incredible temple. And this is a December solstice sunrise. Right. So in 2017, when the alignment, the Kazemi of Sun Saturn 
was on December solstice and the alignment was Earth, Sun, Saturn. This was literally Sun and Saturn aligning to the Karnak temple in this way, or I should say the Karnak temple aligning to it. When you align to a December solstice sunrise, if you look in the other direction, the same azimuth, you're going to see the summer solstice sunset, which is a beautiful image you can find at Karnak as well. And I show this because the ancients aligned to the seasons, to the year, to stars, and it's something really we, I feel, are called more and more to do. If we want to connect to the ancient wisdom, which doesn't only exist in temples in Kemet or Egypt or in Stonehenge, which is aligned in this way in many ways, or Newgrange or Chichen Itza, or wherever around the world, you know, that we can align things in our own homes. We can align ourselves. And just as I can feel it in my bones, a very Saturn thing, when I choose to get a little heavier and ground into the earth before I reach and open my mouth, you know. So it is when we practice alignment and we really work with directions. If there's one thing that I could possibly leave for this great art of astrology before I split, it would be to remind us that the genius of the tropical zodiac is that it is a directional system. So many indigenous shamanic systems around the world are based on the cardinal directions. We can even say the seven directions, the west, south, east, sorry, west, north, east, south, which I love to call the rest and the roots and the rise and the reach, the above, the below in the middle of it all, the seventh direction, which is the first, the heart, where we are all connected, both in our own hearts and the heart of our planet. For the southern hemisphere, by the way, rise is always east, but your reach is in the north, rest in the west, and roots in the south. But northern hemisphere rising in the east, reaching in the south at the midheaven, resting in the west at the descendant, rooting in the north below the ground at the icy, the imum cheli, the bottom of the heaven, we rise again. The above, the below, the middle. We measure astrology from the center of earth, you know? It's a beautiful thing. It's not where we live. It's not where we can witness these heavenly happenings, but it's where we are all connected. And you'll hear me say this again and again if you follow my work. If we reach right now our hands, to the heavens, you and I are pointing to a different star. But if we reach down through our spines into the heart of our planet, that's where we all meet. That's where we are all one. And that's why we measure astrology from there. And practicing with the directions will not only help us tune into the land in our own course, but it will help us discover what this zodiac, at least the tropical zodiac, actually is. And what Karnak has been aligned to the solstices in this way for many thousands of years, right? You align a temple to a star that does not last for long. You have to realign it. And there's, a, there's evidence of this right here, this incredible temple. Aligning perhaps to Vega three different times throughout history. But when we align ourselves to the directions, we are also aligning ourselves to the tropical zodiac. That's something I'll speak more later when I look at the alignments of Jupiter and Saturn this year of 2019. All right. So getting directions. And that includes knowing that for the northern hemisphere chart anyway, north is down. All right. So head over to morethanastrology.com slash free. It shows sacred astro there, but do slash free, F-R-E-E. -E, and when you put in your email, I'll send you six hours of free astronomy for astrologers lessons just to help you bring these charts that we use down to earth. There's so much of that now, and it's one of the great ways that we astrologers who can often live so far in the dome place, it's one way that we can ground just by working with our craft earth first. Kemet 
which we now call Egypt, was known as Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt, in a sense. Um, and interestingly, Lower Egypt is north, and many suggest this is because the Nile flows south to north into the Mediterranean. Um, but I believe that, yes, and the sun in Egypt, which is Northern Hemisphere, culminates in the south, you see? Whereas the north is the roots of the world tree, the IC. And this is certainly an astronomical and astrological tradition there. So getting directions will tune us into this ancient wisdom, which is so much of what true Capricorn really is. And it exists in every cell of our DNA. You know, it, this is about connecting to our ancestors. You know, and even to our, our blood lineage. Um, but the ancient ones exist also within us. We are them. And so just being in these practices, I've had people say, well, those postures you do to honor the directions, like, oh, that's ancient, like, Hellenistic postures from the, from the magical traditions. I had no idea, right? But I'm just tuning in to the directions of the way that they teach me to when I spend time outside at a, on a night, like four hours, just sitting due east, you know, and asking east to teach me what east is. I feel this, you know, and I feel this. And that's, I guess, a tale for another time. But if you go to um, that more than astrology.com slash free, one of the lessons is about tuning into the directions where I'll show you these postures that have been teaching me so much about our craft and so much about astrology and helping me ground. And, you know, I'm feeling me again. <laughs> I'm really glad that I slowed down. And that's part of the idea of taking time to present this material that I first presented in this like 45 minute burst for San Francisco Astrological Society on January 6th. Like, just take the pace and see what wants to speak. Capricorn, the indigenous wisdom, the earth wisdom, the, in a sense, you know, the roots of this world tree. And that lives not only in the wisdom of the First Nations people here, the wisdom of the people in Peru. I've been blessed to... Um, learn from some or in Hawaii or wherever it is for you. I mentioned earlier, reaching back to the shamanic traditions, you know, of, of Britannia and whatnot, um, and, and each into Egypt and into the traditions of our craft. But it's very important, I think, to acknowledge that astrology is an indigenous wisdom tradition. And it's gotten so intellectual and so far up into the heavenly reach, I think that it's even forgotten that the zodiac emanates from the heart of earth, that it doesn't approach her from the heavens. And I could go on and on. But the thing that I feel is so important about Saturn and Capricorn, and here we are in the middle of this journey, is deep grounding earthing. You know, Kelly Lee Phipps, I heard this from my friend Gary Caton, had this beautiful thing to say about Saturn, which is plan the work and work the plan. And I love that. And this is really important, but I'm saying, and you'll hear me say again and again in the parts of this 2019 share that this year in so many ways is about be here now. And, you know, astrology can be really challenging in that regard, can't it? I mean, sometimes it's like we're casting charts for 2,000 years ago or 50 years from now or even next week or last year or whatever, and we're running away from this moment now as fast as we can. I mean, that's not typically our intent. And the, the, the other side of that same thing is like we can really profoundly understand this moment by seeing the way that the cycles have led to it, to see how it's part of this heartbeat and the next beat of this rhythm will be then and then, you know, 
again or see how I share this with my nephew or whatever, right? I mean, it's so beautiful and can, that can really help us bring cohesion and help us like expand our awareness of a moment. But we really need to be careful with, are we um, using astrology as a way out? <laughs> because astrology really should be a way in. And Capricorn itself, earth sign, chalice, down and in, not air, not fire, not up and out, involutionary, embodiment. Yeah? Feminine, we can say, if you will. <laughs> Coming into the body, into the monkey suit, which holds this incredible mechanism called the heart. But Capricorn is asking us for a deep embodiment in our remembrance that we are part of the earth body. And astrology can be this, but it, I think, is not often taught this way. And even when it is, it's easy to stray from that and just get so electric and so tech and so intellectual and so world wide web <laughs> with it and not be in our practice. So I said this about Uranus and Taurus and could say this about Pluto and Capricorn, you know, we'll speak about the South node in Capricorn, Jupiter coming to Capricorn. There's a lot of call for us to, earth and we are astrologers so that is something we also must ground and this is a wonderful way to do it study how the ancients aligned to solstices equinoxes to the directions and then do that because when you do you make yourself a talisman for that planetary energy you know i'm not quite there right but you'll notice the shift from when i said i think i'm going to stop this recording and start again because I allowed myself to receive the energetic in the wisdom of Saturn. How would I ever truly transmit anything genuine about the Saturnian energy if I don't prepare myself as a vessel to communicate this energetic, right? And so I'm not there. I mean, in so many ways, you really can't get deep into that Saturnian space while speaking. <laughs> because especially here in Capricorn where Saturn is far, slow and cold, we are asked to just sit and slow down. So if you align to a direction, give yourself to that direction for a night. And if you're wondering how to find the directions naturally, not with a magnetic compass, which won't get you there anyway, um, again, check out the morethanastrology.com slash free, and I'll send you a whole bunch of lessons around it. Or you can meet me in Egypt. <laughs> I would love to go. I have not yet been initiated by a, a pyramid visit to Giza. I'm wondering if this year might actually bring me there finally. I don't know. But I will say, as we shift to honor Jupiter and Sagittarius now, this year really is about the expansion and the exploration of the vision quest. And so it is a wonderful time to look at that bucket list and not wait. Yeah? Who knows what's coming in 2020? And I don't want to feed the fear that is so <laughs> stoked by the flames of astrology right now. But it certainly seems charged. And I think in the Be Here Now um, transmission of 2019 energy, that is most, in a way, in invited or maybe even commanded by Jupiter and Sagittarius. Saturn will be in Capricorn, Pluto will be in Capricorn, Uranus will be in Taurus, Chiron will be in Aries, Neptune will be in Pisces. All that's happening next year, too. You know, this is a year to really honor the beauty of Jupiter and Sagittarius. When, when we jump ahead and look at 2020 and skip 2019, we are skipping this opportunity 
that comes our way once every 12 years to really experience guru, as they call it, Jupiter in, in the Yodish astrology, to experience guru in this Sagittarian way, which is so much the energetic of the Jupiter expression itself. So we speak about Jupiter as expansion planetarily and that Jupiter kind of expands everything that it touches. I mean, it's fascinating to me that when Jupiter ingressed Scorpio um, last year, which was, well, in October of 2017, right? This very much seemed to coincide with the, um, the beautiful Me Too movement in the, in the beginning. I will say that some days before that, there was a Venus-Mars conjunction which was actually the same date as, as I think the first use of that hashtag me too. But so much has come out of, so many skeletons have been coming out of the closet with Jupiter and Scorpio, right? What will Jupiter and Sagittarius bring? In so many ways, Sagittarius is the response to the witness of death. You know, I love to say that the password to the Sagittarius realm is this one word, why? <laughs> and oftentimes we are most inspired to ask why when we see things die. And it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be, I don't stop to smell the roses until I'm told I have terminal illness or something like this, you know? We can really choose to be alive and fully embody. And so much of this year is about that. I'll speak more and more about the, the passion project in this year of 2019. But this great question, why? I mean, look at these pyramids. We can't explain them. I could tell you that those three small ones there can be used as a calendar, um, <laughs> especially the ones that are like that, that are on the other side of the great pyramid, which is, the one in the back shown from this picture. Anyway, you know, one thing that's said about the Great Pyramid of Giza is it will answer any question asked, but always in a riddle. So why these um, great questions that can only be answered with a greater question. This is the vision quest. This is the way of the Sagittarian seeker philosopher and Jupiter expanding that as only Jupiter really can. So it's a year of the seeker. And you know, seeking is not believing. It's a year, and I'll speak more about this at the end, to, to get into our dream work and to, I think, return even, for me anyway, to some of the woo stuff that really excited me before I got more cynical than is necessarily healthy. So Jupiter and Sagittarius, may this be a year of optimism and a hope and stoking the flames of our dreams so that we can bring forth a vision that we want to see in 2020 and beyond. And this really requires us tuning into what kind of revolution do we want? But revolution will not be true unless it is informed through a revelation, a receiving. You know, if you want to know thyself, or know the mind of the higher one, they will say, first know thyself. And Jupiter, I think, and Sagittarius alike are inspiring us, inviting us to explore this world. So my image for um, Jupiter for this year in Sagittarius is... that <laughs> the sacred sites bible so many slides you know let me go through a few of these this is the capricorn ingress that will happen in the year of 2019 the very end december 27th but the be here now teaching from guru ram das i'll say so many ways are the teachings from sagittarius jupiter um, so here is the Sagittarius Kazemi. You can see retrograde Mercury was on the scene. This was November 25th, 2018. And the synodic cycle of Jupiter. We're in a Sagittarius cycle and we'll shift to the um, Capricorn cycle with Jupiter's Kazemi on December 27th, 2019. So let's really tune into Jupiter and Sagittarius this year. 
And this is one of my suggestions. Get around and see some of these sacred sites that inspire you. I'm heading to Palenque in about a month from now. I, I will have returned from this place, having been <laughs> realigned, hopefully, by its energetic. I shouldn't say hopefully, you know. But taking that pilgrimage this year, we don't have to leave, you know, you don't have to leave your country. So I don't want to assume that you live in the United States. You know, these sites are all over the world, but they are right here. We don't have to go to the pyramids. And in a sense, you don't really have to leave your own house, but you should, you know, take the pilgrimage, take the vision quest. So here in this wonderful book, The Sacred Sites Bible, we see Mount Shasta on the right. It's very close to where I live now on the left. You know, what is now called Devil's Tower, but really is Gray Buffalo's Horn in South Dakota, in the Black Hills, a place I've never been yet, but I cannot wait to go. Very deep star place. But say, you know, this is a year to follow that quest to travel and see the other world and experience other cultures and other languages. So Sagittarius for me is the smoke that rises from the fire. I see Aries as the spark, the science of the fire to start things. Leo is the art of the fire, which is the roaring flame that dances and keeps us hot for the whole night, you know. And Sagittarius is the smoke that rises from that flame. It travels far and wide. It takes its own path to the heavens and carries the spark that will you know, complete the circuit of that grand fire trine, which is an up and out energy now. We will see that most of the energies of this year are really down and in and earth and water energies with Jupiter is saying, great, be grounded, be in your heart center, but maybe you're going to learn new ways to do that, not in the habits of your own local space or even in the practice of your yoga, maybe your new yoga is to see how others do this, you know, and travel around and learn from these sites. So, you know, I, I'm the kind of cat that when I get to a site in, in Mexico where I'll be soon, or Athens where I'll be in September, I assume, or Turkey in, in September following, I'm, I'm really blessed to have a great travel year. Um, Obviously, I think I'll see America Stonehenge again, which is an amazing site in New Hampshire, Mystery Hill. Um, you know, I, for me, it's always like, how did they do this? How are these things aligned? And I can get very, like, calculated, right? I mean, even think mythically of Jupiter, <laughs> who is throwing lightning bolts, you know? Which part of us does that? But the brain, which lives up here in the dome of our heavens, you know, maybe that's Olympus. And Jupiter, mythically, it's said that he overthrew his father Saturn, right? Which we were saying earlier really speaks to that root of ourselves. And I'll look at that kind of <clears throat> polarity. Soon, not necessarily an astrological polarity. Those are voiced with Saturn and the light, Saturn, Capricorn, Moon, Cancer, Saturn, Aquarius, Sun, Leo, or with Jupiter and Mercury, right? Jupiter, Sagittarius, Mercury, Gemini, Jupiter, Pisces, traditionally, Mercury, Virgo. And we often say Mercury is that kind of information gathering part of, of our intellect where Jupiter is more the longer reach. It's not necessarily so interested in, in details in this. And so it's important when we get to places, whether we're actually traveling to them, and I suggest you do, or exploring them in a seated meditation or, you know, an asana practice or whatever it may be, it's important that we take some time to really land and sink in. And see, so Saturn in Capricorn, these many Earth planets will really help us if we answer the invitation, will really help us ground in. And in that grounded state, then we can be open to these immense and amazing explorations and really expand up there, you know? So when we still ourselves, and, it, and that's where we can get into that place, you know, they speak about in, in the wonderful series, the Dune books of traveling without moving. But I would suggest first travel with moving. <laughs> it will help you learn how to do that because there are deep 
spiritual technologies and all of these sites. And I have found in my own experience, I mean, you can go to them and just take 3000 pictures and still experience some realignment and attunement. But if you take time to sit down and ask why without trying to know, the very important thing I think with the Sagittarius vision quest and philosophy and seeker, it's like, First, I want to honor the truth that I'm not going to know the answers. In a sense, that is giving me permission to experience so much more of the truth. I always tell this with people when I bring them out to the sky. And they're, the first thing always is people beating themselves up for not knowing the constellations. And it's like, phew, man, easy. The password to receive the direct heavenly information is the energetic experience of wonder and ah which is just like wow amazing look at all that i could never possibly know and the release of our own guilt for not knowing is the opening to receive the direct the direct information for again we are channels you know we are divining rods between the heavens and earth and we have to very much get grounded and be in the earth so I spoke earlier about like the Qigong and, and Tai Chi practices or yoga or ecstatic dance. And I think these are all really wonderful ways for us to also open up to the great expansion that's available through Jupiter's journey um, and, and at home in Sagittarius. And I'll speak more about that as we move along. I was going to speak about Mars um, today, but I think that I'm going to, just end here in Palenque. And when I come back, we'll speak about Mars, Venus, and Mercury. I'm not sure when that will be, but I'm glad you spent some time here with me today. Thank you for giving me permission to um, flail about and course correct a little bit. <laughs> And may we always remember to do this and may we not be um, ashamed of who we are and all of who we are. Hmm. Seeking is not believing. But when we seek, we might just find true belief which in a word is faith. And I can say, as far as I'm concerned, that <clears throat> poem <laughs> speaks so much about this year and the years to come. See you in space. Oh, right please like this video. And I would love for you to leave a comment. What do you think? Please teach me. Share it around. That really, really helps. And if you're in a good space to do so, you know, you could um, give something back for what you receive here if you have. You can find me at morethanastrology.com. There's a page there of offerings um, or services, it's currently called, where you could book a session and we can listen to your soul song together and have a journey with your chart. I would love that. It's one of my favorite things to do in this work that has chosen me. You also find donate buttons uh, where you can give a couple bucks if you'd like. Um, and an events page if you want to hang out on earth someday. Um, also links to this YouTube channel and other things. The website needs some work, but there are things that you can find there if you go have a look. I really appreciate your participation here and your support wherever and whenever you are. Loving planets to you, friends.